Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Daisy Raisler and your hostess. And today I am bringing you a new book to the channel. It is titled The Power of Concentration by Theron Q. Dumont. It was published in 1918 and it is in the public domain. So the reason I was attracted to this title was exactly what it says, The Power of Concentration. I believe that many of us are so distracted that we don't remember what it is really to concentrate. There is so much technology really distracting us. And I mean, I don't remember before when I was a little girl ever hearing the word ADD or how many disorders there are because attention deficit. Wow. So this really piqued my interest. And I would love to learn how to concentrate more. And I do believe that there is a correlation between a certain sense of confidence and concentration that allows for execution with intention and possibly uh, a great deal of strength behind all that. Anyway, <laughs> let's get started on this and I will go with the introduction. Introduction. It is of the utmost value to learn to concentrate. To make the greatest success of anything, you must be able to concentrate your entire thought upon the idea you're working on. The person that is able to concentrate utilizes all constructive thoughts and shuts out all destructive ones. The greatest man would accomplish nothing if he lacked concentration. We all know that in order to accomplish certain thing, we must concentrate. It is of the utmost value to learn how to concentrate. To make a success of anything, you must be able to concentrate your entire thought upon the idea you're working out. Do not become discouraged if you are unable to hold your thought on the subject very long at first. There are very few that can. It seems a peculiar fact that it is easier to concentrate on something that is not good for us than on something that is beneficial. This tendency is overcome when we learn to concentrate consciously. If you will just practice a few concentration exercises each day, you will find you will soon develop this wonderful power. Success is assured when you are able to concentrate for you are then able to utilize for your good all constructive thoughts and shut out all destructive ones. It is of the greatest value to be able to think only that which will be beneficial. Did you ever stop to think what an important part your thoughts, concentrated thoughts, play in your life? This book shows their far-reaching and all-abiding effects. These lessons you will find very practical. The exercises I have thoroughly tested, they are arranged so that you will notice an improvement from the very start and this will give you encouragement. They point out ways in which you can help yourself. Man is a wonderful creature, but he must be trained and developed to be useful. A great work can be accomplished by every man if he can be awakened to do his very best. But the greatest man would not accomplish much if he lacked concentration and effort. Dwarfs can often do the work of giants, when they are transformed by the almost magic power of great mental concentration. But giants will only do the work of dwarfs when they lack this power. We accomplish more by concentration than by fitness. The man that is apparently best suited for a place does not always fill it best. It is the man that concentrates on its very possibility that makes an art of both his work and his life. 
all your real advancement must come from your individual effort. This course of lessons will stimulate and inspire you to achieve success. It will bring you into perfect harmony with the law of success. It will give you a firmer hold on your duties and responsibilities. The methods of thought concentration given in this work, if put into practice, will open up interior avenues that will connect you with the everlasting laws of being and their exhaustless foundation of unchangeable truth. As most people are very different, it is impossible to give instructions that will be of the same value to all. The author has endeavored in these lessons to awaken that within the soul, which perhaps the book does not express. So study these lessons as means of awakening and training that which is within yourself. Let all your acts and thoughts have the intensity and power of concentration. To really get the full benefit of these lessons, you should read a page, then close the book and thoroughly recall its ideas. If you will do this, you will soon cultivate a concentrated mental habit which will enable you to read with ordinary rapidity and remember all that you read. And this concludes the introduction. We will move on to lesson one. Concentration finds the way. Everyone has two natures. One wants us to advance and the other wants to pull us back. The one that we cultivate and concentrate on decides what we are at the end. Both nature are trying to gain control. The will alone decides the issue. A man by one supreme effort of the will may change his whole career and almost accomplish miracles. You may be that man. You can be if you will to be, for will can find a way or make one. I could easily fill a book of cases where men plodding along in a matter-of-fact way were all at once aroused, and as if awakening from a slumber, they developed the possibilities within them, and from that time on were different persons. You alone can decide when the turning point will come. It is a matter of choice whether we allow our diviner self to control us or whether we will be controlled by the brute within us. No man has to do anything that he does not want to do. He is therefore the director of his life if he wills to be. What we are to do is the result of our training. We are like putty and can be completely controlled by our will power. Habit is a matter of acquirement. You hear people say, he comes by this or that naturally, a chip off the old block, meaning that he is only doing what he is, his parents did. This is quite often the case, but there is no reason for it, for a person can break a habit just the moment he masters the I will. A man may have been a good for nothing all his life up to this very minute. But from this time on, he begins to amount to something. Even old men have suddenly changed and accomplished wonders. I lost my opportunity, says one. That may be true. But by sheer force of will, we can find a way to bring us another opportunity. There is no truth in the saying that opportunity knocks at our door but once in a lifetime. The fact is, opportunity never seeks us. We must seek it. What actually turns out to be one man's opportunity was another man's loss. In this day, one man's brain is matched against another's. It is often quickness of brain action that determines the result. One man thinks, I will do it. But while he procrastinates, 
The other goes ahead and does the work. They both have the same opportunity. The one will complain of his lost chance, but it should teach him a lesson, and it will if he is seeking the path that leads to success. Many persons read good books, but as they do not get much good out of them, they do not realize that all any book or any lesson course can do is to awaken them to their possibilities, to stimulate them to use their willpower. You may teach a person from now until doomsday, but that person will only know what he learns himself. You can lead him to the fountain, but you can't make him drink. One of the most beneficial practices I know of is that of looking for the good in everyone and everything. For there is good in all things. We encourage a person by seeing his good qualities, and we also help ourselves by looking for them. We gain their good wishes, a most valuable asset sometimes. We give back what we give out. The time comes when most all of us need encouragement, need booing up. So form the habit of encouraging others, and you will find it a wonderful tonic for both those encouraged and yourself, for you will get back encouraging and uplifting thoughts. Life furnishes us the opportunity to improve, but whether we do it or not depends upon how near we live up to what is expected of us. The first of each month, a person should sit down and examine the progress he has made. If he has not come up to expectations, he should discover the reason, and by extra exertion measure up to what is demanded next time. Every time that we fall behind what we planned to do, we lose just so much for the time is gone forever. We may find a reason for doing it, but most excuses are poor substitutes for action. Most things are possible. Ours may be a hard task, but the harder the task, the greater the reward. It is the difficult things that really develop us. Anything that requires only a small effort utilizes very few of our faculties and yields a scanty harvest of achievement. So do not shrink from a hard task, for to accomplish one of these will often bring us more good than a dozen lesser triumphs. I know that every man that is willing to pay the price can be a success. The price is not money, but in effort. The first essential quality for success is the desire to do, to be something. The next thing is to learn how to do it. The next, to carry it into execution. The man that is the best able to accomplish anything is the one with a broad mind. The man that has acquired knowledge that may, it is true, be foreign to this particular cause, but is nevertheless of some value in all cases. So the man that wants to be successful must be liberal. He must acquire all the knowledge he can. He must be well posted not only in one branch of his business, but in every part of it. Such a man achieves success. The secret of success is to try always to improve yourself no matter where you are or what your position. Learn all you can. Don't see how little you can do, but how much you can do. Such a man will always be in demand, for he establishes the reputation of being a hustler. There's always room for him because progressive firms never let a hustler leave their employment if they can help it. The man that reaches the top is the gritty, plucky, hard worker, and never the timid, uncertain, slow worker. An untried man is seldom put in a position of responsibility and power. 
the man selected is one that has done something, achieved results in some line, or taken the lead in his department. He is placed there because of his reputation of putting vigor and virility into his efforts and because he has previously shown that he has pluck and determination. The man that is chosen at the crucial time is not usually a genius. He does not possess any more talent than others, but he has learned that results can only be produced by untiring, concentrated effort. That miracles in business do not just happen. He knows that the only way they will happen is by sticking to a proposition and seeing it through. That is the only secret of why some succeed and others fail. The successful man gets used to seeing things accomplished and always feels sure of success. The man that is a failure gets used to seeing failure, expects it, and attracts it to him. It is my opinion that with the right kind of training, every man could be a success. It is really a shame that so many men and women, rich in ability and talent, are allowed to go to waste, so to speak. Someday, I hope to see a millionaire philanthropist start a school for the training of failures. I am sure he could not put his money to a better use. In a year's time, the science of practical psychology could do wonders for him. He could have agencies on the lookout for men that had lost their grip on themselves, that had through in disposition weakened their will, that through some sorrow or misfortune had become discouraged. At first, all they need is a little help to get them back on their feet, but usually they get a knock downwards instead. The result is that their latent powers never develop and both they and the world are the losers. I trust that in the near future, someone will heed the opportunity of using some of his millions in arousing men that have begun to falter. All they need to be shown is that there is within them an omnipotent source that is ready to aid them, providing they will make use of it. Their minds only have to be turned from despair to hope to make them regain their hold. When a man loses his grip today, he must win his redemption by his own will. He will get little encouragement or advice of an inspiring nature. He must usually regain the right road alone. He must stop dissipating his energies and turn his attention to building a useful career. Today, we must conquer our weakening tendencies alone. Don't expect anyone to help you. Just take one big brace, make firm resolution, and resolve to conquer your weaknesses and vices. Really, none can do this for you. They can encourage you. That is all. I can think of nothing but lack of health that should interfere with one becoming successful. There is no other handicap that you should not be able to overcome. To overcome a handicap, all that is necessary to do is to use more determination and grit and will. The man with grit and will may be poor today and wealthy in a few years. Willpower is a better asset than money. Will will carry you over the chasms of failure if you but give it the chance. The man that have risen to the highest positions have usually had to gain their victories against big odds. Think of the hardships many of our inventors have gone through before they became a success. Usually, they have been very much misunderstood by relatives and friends. 
very often they did not have the bare necessities of life. Yet, by sheer determination and resolute courage, they managed to exist somehow until they perfected their inventions, which afterwards greatly helped in bettering the condition of others. Everyone really wants to do something, but there are a few that will put forward the needed effort to make the necessary sacrifice to secure it. There's only one way to accomplish anything, and that is to go ahead and do it. A man may accomplish almost anything today if he just sets his heart on doing it and lets nothing interfere with his progress. Obstacles are quickly overcome by the man that sets out to accomplish his heart's desire. The bigger the man, the smaller the obstacles. The smaller the man, the greater the obstacle appears. Always look at the advantage you gain by overcoming obstacles and it will give you the needed courage for their conquest. Do not expect that you will always have easy sailing. Parts of your journey are likely to be rough. Don't let the rough places put you out of commission. Keep on with the journey. Just the way you weather the storm shows what material you are made of. Never sit down and complain of the rough places, but think how nice the pleasant stretches were. View with delight the smooth plains that are in front of you. Do not let a setback stop you. Think of it as a mere incident that has to be overcome before you can reach your goal. And this concludes chapter one. Let's turn the page in the next video.